Okay. I have just gone live on the YouTubes, but it's not, it's separate. It's amazing what you can do with modern technology. Um, separate from the Zoom room. And let's start. Uh, let's just start with an eye exercise before we do anything else. Then we'll breathe, but we'll come into our eyes first. So you're just going to look, keep your head fairly stable without a lot of tension. Look up, look down, look to one side, look to the other side. Imagine taking your eyes backwards in your head so that they're moving back. Just imagine it. You could close them and then let them kind of bulge forward and reach out into the space. We'll try that again one more time. Eyes go up. Eyes go down, eyes go to one side, to the other side, eyes go back in your head, and then eyes come forward. And then without turning your head, look from side to side, and then find the diagonal up one high corner and down the opposite corner, then the other diagonal, and then circle your eyes around. And if you find that your eyes are kind of skipping areas, Follow your finger, like make a circle with your finger and follow it around. You can also see how big, try both sides, right? Go both directions, try one finger, try the other. I'm like, I'm looking at my finger, but, and my head starts to move too. We'll get, we'll get in there anyway. So eye exercises are, are good. We want our eyes to have capacity to keep doing different things, but also hands and hand dexterity exercises. So we're going to, go next into a hand dexterity with our breathing, I think. So I am going to come away from the camera and I am going to inhale, close, uh, let me just say it. You're gonna try and touch your fingers together on top on the inhale and then together on the bottom. I'm using my pointer finger. So close your eyes, inhale up, touch your fingers together on top and then touch your finger together on the bottom. Then change it to the middle finger. Touch it together on top on the inhale, together on the bottom on the exhale. Inhale up, ring finger. Touch it together on the top, touch it together on the bottom. Try not to look. Pinky finger. Touch it together on the top, touch it together on the bottom. It's hard to concentrate on all those things, maybe. So let's just shake that out for a second. Inhale open, really coming into presence in your own body, letting go of the rest of the day. Whatever's gonna happen later, whatever came before, landing on your feet right now on the planet in this space with all the other people in TV land and also in the uh, Zoom room. Actually, right now, there's anyone in TV land with us. Maybe they will join us soon. Oh, we got another person in the Zoom room though. Okay, so let's. Um, Let's go back to the fingers thing, but we're going to change it. So it's going to be in front of you and then behind you. So first, point your finger and close your eyes. Fingers get touched together in the front and then touch it together behind you. Oh, it's hard to find in the back space. Change it to your middle finger in front. Oh, I opened my eyes. In back, try to keep your eyes closed. Ring finger. Listen to the directions. Front and back and then pinky finger. Front and back. And it might be that there's a huge, like your hands are barely finding each other. So this is something to work on and understand that actually your brain will put it together pretty quickly once you start doing it. And you're like, oh, that's where my body is. What are we learning? We're learning proprioception. We're also learning, well, proprioception, kinesthetic awareness. Proprioception is our body being able to know what it's doing in relationship to other body parts or the space around us. Kinesthetic awareness is our awareness of our movement in our hemisphere, in our realm of potential movement. They're very close to the same thing, but not exactly. And then there's one more thing that's worth talking about, interoception, inside, what it feels like inside our body. And when we work from a more somatic practice, we're feeling into our sensations and trying to not like override our body all the time, but work in as a connected, coherent body mind in accord with our own self, our cells and our self working together. All right, let's do some bigger inhales. Inhale, lift, exhale, bend your knees, arch your back, take it down to the floor, soften, and then roll it up through your spine. I'll show you this sideways. You're gonna inhale up, 
arching, exhale, stick out your butt, stick out your chest, take it down, knees are bent, relax your head, roll it up through your spine. Arch, look to the heavens, bend your knees, stick out your butt, take it all the way down, surrender and release and roll it up. And one more, arch and open, arch, 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 take it down and roll it back up. Let's go with circles with our pelvis, circling around. So we started with the circles with our eyes. Maybe we'll make it a circle in class today. Go the other way. Feel what you're holding on to in your body as you're doing that. Is there all is there extra effort? Are you driving the car with the brakes on or, or are you moving with real efficiency? A lot of times the way that we learn <laughs> in a lot of Western exercise is put more attention into it. But in this, I want you to just take the tension out. Move with as much ease as possible. Circle your shoulders. Trusting your body to find a healthy pathway, right? Without adding more tension, but noticing where you could drop tension. Let the elbows get into the circle. And then through the wrists, the wrists are reaching out, wrists coming up, and then out through the fingertips. Let's change direction, but let's change it the other way. So we're gonna go big to start, reaching out through your fingertips, radiating out into space, then wrists, wrists are reaching, and then elbows, elbows, and then just the shoulders and shoulders. Shake it out, let it go. I mean, it takes tension to move, right? We're moving our muscles, but we don't need to add more tension. We're gonna do these circles up. So you're inhaling, big lift, Arch back, exhale, bring it down, circling the other direction, pushing back, tippy toes. Inhale up, deep breath, arch, exhale, change direction, take it down, push back, tippy toes. One more. Three is the magic number in our body. Why is that? Because usually by the time we've done something three times, our body has kind of gotten into where it needs to go. All right, shake that out, let it go. Let's just do our head. So you can do a full head circle if you want to. But if it feels painful to go into the back space, then just kind of come up over the top. I'm gonna let my shoulders get into it as well. So I'm circling a little bit bigger, shoulders, chest, lungs, heart, circling, opening. I'm inhaling as I go back, exhaling as I go forward. Then we're gonna go for a full drop to the front. So you're gonna to go to the side, bend your knees, drop it down, come to the side, lift and look up. To the side, bend your knees, drop it down. To the side, arch and open. One more, to the side, bend, come to the side and come up. And then we're gonna go the other way, just starting with the head. It can start small. After you've done it a few times, start to add the shoulders and chest, letting the whole upper body circle around. But also kind of feeling like a growing up and away from the floor with this movement. So we're not kind of clamping into our neck, we're lengthening through the back of the head. Start to let it get bigger and bending your knees, taking it toward the floor. Lifting chest, lungs, and heart, opening on top. Two more like that. Ah. And then come in. Circles are kind of magical. So let's just keep up with it. We're gonna take them down to our knees and feet. So I'm gonna go bent knee position and I'm gonna circle my knees together and I'm moving around my feet. So it's like I'm rolling around the edges of my feet and I'm in this sort of bent forward <laughs> position, circling one direction, letting that really mobilize through my muscles and bones of my foot and change direction, go the other way. Good. And then we're gonna go away from each other. Really still moving through your feet. If this hurts in your knees, make it smaller. Most of that circling should be coming from your ankles and your hip joint. Change direction.
Good. And then come in. Then we're just going to circle our foot. So you're going to roll over your toes, circle around. Foot and ankle change direction. You may find there's one area in there that it doesn't do very well, <laughs> or maybe more than one. Change it to the other foot going one way, getting over your toes. And then the other way, little troublemaker is there. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Sweetie. Okay. And let's let that go. Let's do presses, press up, lower down, bend your knees and straighten. Push head through the ceiling, head out of camera, up, down, bend, straighten. Up, down, bend, straighten. Up, down, bend, straighten. Up, down, bend, straighten. Just up and down. One, two, three. Feel like your head is going to the ceiling. Four, Five, which mine is six, seven, hello calves, eight, nine, ten. How are we going to do this? We haven't done this in a long time. Feet together. You're going to turn out and then turn in, out and in, out and in. Coming back, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, coming in. Turn it out, in, out. My pelvis is moving. Out and oh, I'm gonna go off of my mat. Coming in, toe, heel, toe, heel. It doesn't have to be like perfect. We're just getting that internal external rotation and that movement through your foot. Turn it out, in, out, in, out, in. Come back. Turn in. Toes, heel, toes, heel. Bring it in. Turn it out. In, out. And shifting your weight as you open up. Hopefully you are not on something slippery. Good. And that's it. That's it. That's it for that exciting stuff. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Let go. Bounce. So we're going to do a little breath with movement. So it's going to be a sniff through your nose and then a out through your mouth. And it's going to be like this. Shake it out. Good. Shake, shake, shake. One more time. Slow. Fast. Good. Shake it, shake it, shake it. I think we have to do the limp flush now. We should have a lot of that stuff flowing more. So we just want to make sure it continues to flow. I'm taking off my hot pink sweatshirt, which I now live in all the time. What can I say? Hands together. Get the energy in between your palms, starting with your right hand in the upper uh, left. So kind of under and over your clavicle. You're not doing this to injure yourself. You're doing this to open up that flow, the, the, the gateway back into the heart from the, from the lymphatic system. Subclavian vein pulls it all back in under here. So this is the main return with the fluids that need to filter back all the way out of your system. So we want to make sure that that pathway is open, but we want to be gentle with it. We're not trying to hurt ourselves here. Gentle coming up around the angle of the jaw, lots of lymphatic stuff coming out there. The glial lymph, the glymph has been coming out of your brain overnight. We want to make sure that is open. Oh, you can move around. Uh, hump, face. Free it up. Let's go to the other side. Right hand, oh, sorry, left hand on the right. Around your collarbone. It can be over and under. Start to build a relationship with touch, with your own physical touch, touching your own body. Most people are horribly touch starved. We, we are, I don't know. I come from one of those cold northern, you know, uh, Northern European, like, you know, let's keep our distance, stiff upper lip type places. We could benefit from a little more connection, touch, warmth, human relationship. 
uh, co-regulation, where we're in close relationship with other humans. And if we don't have them, then we got to do it ourselves, right? So touch is a great thing. Come up around the angle of the jaw. This is a weird thing to do, but I need water. Again, free up your throat. You can feel that movement. Like if you just put your finger there and do that, you're going to feel that area moving. So that's what we want, movement in the tissue, opening up those lymphatic lymph nodes, lymphatic pathways. Just come in here right next to your nose. You're going to circle around in there. There should be like a little indentation. Squish up your face, move your face around. And then come in, cheek right in there. And again, squish it around. I found another, actually, there's another guy. I think he's Scandinavian. He's on Instagram. He's another lymph flow person. And he'll show you pictures of the lymph as you work those areas. Again, we want to be gentle. We're not trying to injure our face or bruise ourselves. And some people have very, like, I want to say, as we age, we tend to lose integrity, like the collagen, the um, integrity of our, our fascia gets a little bit less. So when we move it, we want to be gentle, but that's also going to build integrity. All right, let's do a thymus bump. Oh, 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 bring on your best. Oh, we, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. And then K27 points right here, edge of your clavicle down. There should be a little indentation just circling in there. Yeah, I was performing yesterday on a very dusty floor. And I had also been cleaning my apartment and like a very dusty apartment. And so like after this dance where I'm rolling around on the floor for a good portion of the time on this dusty floor, I had like this coughing fit. Which lasted a very long time. So now I'm like, okay, I really need to clear that stuff out. I was like, I need to go straight home now. I didn't stay to watch anybody else. I was like, I'm done. Got to go home. This is enough. And will I perform tonight? Probably. But I was, I was like, how am I going to feel in the morning? I just got to clear this stuff out. So we're just going to do a little gentle tap on the lungs. Gentle tap. And then we're coming into armpit peck. Right hand to left armpit peck. Get in there. Yeah. Relax your face. Yeah, I came home and like chilled out, took a shower, did like a neti pot, did a whole bunch of energy work <laughs> on myself and went to bed. I'm like, okay, I got to clear this crap out. I managed to just not swear there. That's an amazing thing. Crap. So we're on the other side. This is left hand to right. We're going to come in. We're going to breathe it first, and then we're going to pump it. So diaphragm. Here's the bottom of my ribs. Actually, let's just do a pull across that. So here's the middle xiphoid process coming down under my ribs. Little pull. It's like moving along my liver. My, uh, what is it called? Spleen on the other side. Three pulls down. I'm just digging my fingers gently in, giving a little pull along my fascia, along the tissue, along that line. Shake it out. Let's do a pumping breath. So big sniff through your nose and a big diaphragmatic pulse out. Great. Little pulse in and up. So you're going to dig your fingers in there. There's my belly button. There's my side foot process right in the middle, pulsing in and up, going for cisterna chile in there. That is our biggest lymph node in our body. If you have, if your abs are kind of bracing, you're going to have a heart, which they might be just because you're standing straight. You want to fold over a little and let your fingers get in there, get into the deep, the depth, give it a little poke. Huh. And then coming down to the inguinal fold between your hip bone, front of your ASIS and your pubic bone.
and then take it down behind your knees. And so I'm bending my knees, I'm getting in with my finger, but this the flat of the side of my finger is making circles. So for the tissue in our body, for a lot of injuries and a lot of things, if we just jam in there, that's not always going to be helpful. So, but some gentle circular movement can really help clear out inflammation, scar tissue, stuff like that. So this has been what I do. So I'm just showing you on my arm because you can see, like, I'm not jamming it in. I'm, I'm not digging, but I'm moving all that around. Right now, you can see I'm really moving my skin and my sub, what is it called? Superficial fascia. If I go a little deeper, I can get into the muscle, but circular movement is gonna have more of an expansive quality than just going up and down or going across. Just saying this, I have helped like for myself, healed a lot of injuries much more quickly by just getting in there and doing that kind of rubbing. Anyway, and then you don't just do the one area, you go all around, right? All around the body. Often like if we come to like places where there's joints, insertions, we wanna move in there. All right, let's take it down to the floor. I feel like I've been up here lecturing for a long time now. Down to the floor, onto your back, on the floor. I hope that you have vacuumed recently. <laughs> I just did because the floor and the dust and the cats. Yeah, I'm like, okay. When you have cats, you pretty much have to vacuum all the time. Ah, just take a rest. Maybe a little teeny um, heel rock, but really it's just a spinal undulation. Let your head and neck release. Jaw relax. Like you're nodding, yes, yes, yes. I'll have some of that. Yes, I will let go of that. Yes. Mm hmm. What do you need to say yes to more of in your life, right? Are you holding out on yourself? Are there things that if you said yes, you would have a better life? Sometimes we need to learn to say yes. Sometimes we need to learn to say no. But <laughs> Sometimes we need to learn to say yes. I am a person who says yes way too much. <laughs> I'm not good at, it's not that I'm not good at no. I'm getting much better, but I'm usually like, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my God, why did I just say yes to all that stuff? And I then I have to remind myself that because I wanted to do it. All right, let's go with no. Just a no. No, no, thank you. I don't want that. Or I'm ready to back out. I'm sorry. I can't give you my energy anymore. I need to do my own thing. Right? You can always back out. Sometimes we feel like things are impossible and we can't say no and we can't, you know, pull away. But you know what? We have a lot more choice than we think we have. And if you really tune into your body, your body's going to tell you a lot. Like I had a deal with my body last night that if I woke up and my throat and my lungs were still feeling bad, I wasn't going to do the performance tonight. Are they feeling bad? They're not feeling that bad. They're, they're not feeling 100%, but they're like maybe 25% off. So that's good enough. I can do the performance. If they were worse, I would say no. All right, let's do a little, uh, I'm just picking up my legs because it feels good. Shake out the legs. Shake out your arms. Shake, shake, shake. Release, release, release. Free up your spine. Dry like bacon. Or pop like popcorn. And then release that. Bring it down. Help us up. Circles. We're just going to keep going with this circle theme. If you feel like good about them, make them a little bit bigger. If it's hurting, you don't feel good about them, make them smaller. Change direction the other way. So the same thing, as I said, making the circles on your tissue, if you have an injury, it's also like if we circle in our body, it's pulling the tissue in different ways than the linear movement. So we hydrate, we lubricate our inner body in a way that has more three-dimensionality. And then roll it down through your spine. Let's do some internal rotation, just turning in one leg and then the other, my feet are kind of wide. So I'm spiraling in. Circling and spiraling go very well together. Internal rotation, letting that massage through your hip and lengthen the front of the quad and the front of the torso on 
the sides lengthening down. Good. And then let's take the knees and our hands and we're going to make circles here. Circling, lubricating up your hip socket, releasing tension in your inner thighs, and change direction. Good, and then release that. Let's do big circles with our legs. You can take your hands on the floor or you can take your hands behind your head. I'm gonna work with my hands behind my head right now, legs up to the ceiling. And I said big circles, but they could be small circles. Big or small, working with what feels good to you. And head could be down or up. I'm gonna flex down and point up. Flexing my feet and then pointing as I come up the middle. If you're doing a smaller circle, decide where you want to flex and point. Yeah, one of the reasons that I am performing tonight is because most of my friends that are coming to this show are coming tonight. And I know some of them are actually traveling from further away. So I want to dance for them. And then relax, come in, give it all a shake. And then we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to flex down. Am I going to flex down? Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to flex down and then point as I come up. Flexing down, pointing up. And now I'm going to let my arms down, let my head down. I'm going to go a little higher up with my spine on this. So I'm going to peel my butt up off the floor. It's just an option, you don't have to do it. Two more. And relax. Let's roll from side to side. Easy and gentle, so feet can stay on the floor. And you're just rolling. You could imagine that you are and a beautiful Caribbean beach. And the waves are just gently lapping at the shore and you're just laying in that water right at the edge of that wave, very soft, gentle waves. <laughs> Sand getting all over in all the wrong places, but letting the waves just lap at your body. And the salty inner fluids of your body are in Harmony with the waves of the ocean. Ah, just letting tension melt away, relaxing your neck and shoulders. And if we're gonna, we're just gonna add to this a little bit. Uh, you're gonna take your arms up over your head, legs down below you. You may not have the space for this. So if you don't, you're just gonna go as far as you can, then come back and go the other way. But if you have the space, you're gonna roll onto your side, onto your belly. Just keep rolling and then go back. Seeing, rolling like a log. Right into the plant. Ah, seeing if it gets easier. You might be like, oh my God, I don't wanna do this because I didn't back in the floor. But, Maybe next time, if that is the case. All right, let's come back in. Oh, I want to do these circles with the ball. So I've got my little eight pound ball. You might have a weight. It doesn't have to be a ball. It could be like a single weight or two weights in your hands held together, however you want to do it. Knees together, feet turned in. Another circle around your body with the ball. Inhale up over your head, and exhale as you come forward. And then change direction, go the other way. If all this circling is uncomfortable, just go forward and backward, do something different, make it work for you. If you feel like, oh my God, enough with the circles, or these just aren't working for me today, then change it. 
be creative. Have a moment where you go, I am going to rebel and do something different. <laughs> That's my specialty. Good. And come in and relax. Yeah. So being a maximalist, if there are two styles of ballet taught in my town, I'm going to go to both schools and learn them both. There are two styles of capoeira that I can study. I'm going to study them both. Like I'm not a, I don't, I might stick with one thing for a very long time, but I'm learning as much about all the ways of doing that as possible. Let's take your legs up and spiral. If spiraling hurts, do a full roll from side to side with the upper and lower body going together. If you want to make it harder, then make it harder. If anyone ever says this is the one and only way to do something, that is like a direct challenge for me to find six other ways to do that thing. Good, and bring it in. Rolling back and forth, rounding through your spine, massaging through your back. You can take it forward. And I mean, people find a lot of comfort in like authoritarian ways where yeah. this is the one right way for certain people, not all people. Or like like a really rigid Pilates class that follows the you know exact way that it's done. But you know what? Joseph Pilates made up over 500 exercises. So somebody else just decided to be rigid about that. It wasn't him. All right, take it in. Have a moment of coming in for a landing, a little moment of stillness. If you need to move more, move more. Just breathe. Feel the rise and fall of your breath. Invite your body to relax. Invite your body to release any emotional tension, any physical tension. There's a third one there, <laughs> like spiritual tension. Yeah, just letting go of anything that you don't need to hold on to. Just invite it to melt away, letting the, letting the universe compost that energy, using that tension that's being held for something better, something more nourishing. And let's roll it over onto our bellies, all the way onto your stomach. And we're going to do a baby cobra, just straight up. Inhale, no hands. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. If you want to, you can come all the way up, pushing in your hands. See what's happening in your shoulders. Like I can sink down into my shoulders or really push through them. Just notice what's going on there. What's the relationship to your arms, to your shoulders, to your torso? Feeling into it. You can bend your legs if you want to. And then we're going to do another little circle. Again, if you're done with circles, if circles aren't helping you, skip it and just go up and down or do something totally different. Otherwise, you're going to take your head ear towards your shoulder, coming up partway, ear to the other shoulder, bangs to the floor. If you have them, fringe, bangs to the floor. Three in one direction, three or four, and then change direction the other way. And relax. Curl your toes under. Take your head on your hands and just push up and down. Softening your neck and shoulders. Breathe. Let your body be like a sack of bones, just relaxed and easy, jingling around, jangly bones inside your body. Nothing to hold on to. Just let go. The earth is going to catch you. Uh, and then arms out in front. Let's go straight up. Open it out. Bring it in and come down. Nice and linear. Up, 
widen, bring it in and down. Up, widen, in, down, up, out, in, down, two more. Up, out, in, down, last one. Up, out, and in and down. Take it back into your child's pose. Big breathing. Ah, melt and let go. Wiggle a little bit from side to side. Soften, head tail. Inner body relaxed. And then shift your weight back, roll it all the way up. Let's come into a forearm plank. Curl your toes under, circles with your pelvis. Four or five in one direction, and then go the other way. Come down, we're gonna arch, lift your legs up, drop your legs, drop your head, curl, roll it down, look towards your pubic bone. Pelvis drops, roll it up through your spine, lift your legs, drop your legs, drop your head. Round, roll it down, roll it up, lift, drop, roll it down, roll it, lift, drop. What are your eyeballs doing? Eyeballs can lead the way. This is our last one. Walk it back into a child's pose. Relax, relax your head and neck, relax your shoulder, wiggle around. Soften the inner body. Soft, spacious, relaxed inner body. And then roll it up. So like you can have really strong muscles that when they're not engaged are very soft, right? Like muscles when they're not in action can be really relaxed and juicy. If we're chronically holding tension, extra tension that we don't need to be holding, we're actually weakening the muscle. Like the muscle needs to go in both directions into really relaxed and free flowing as opposed to engaged and uh, working, right? When the muscle has, so muscles can do a few different things. They can stretch and elongate, they can engage and contract, and then they can be in a neutral place in the middle where they are neither stretched nor contracted. And that's when we can get our neutral space to be really relaxed, we have access to things. Like we're able to move quickly and also to heal quickly because our we, we are we heal more quickly, maybe. For me, it tends to be that way. Like the more I can be in my normal state in a very relaxed state, so I'm not upregulated, I'm not excessively downregulated, but I'm in like a good flow state. That's where we want to try and get for our general being. All right, let's do, let me have some more water. I'm still, I can still feel the tickle. Mm. And part of the reason why like I had this, thing happened to me yesterday, this big coughing fit, was because my body was dehydrated. I hadn't had enough water throughout the day, and I had been pretty active. So movement hydrates tissues, but we want to make sure that we're also getting enough good quality water. Let's come down, elbows and knees, one leg out behind you, just lifting up and then down. Doesn't have to be a big kick, just a lift. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch it to the other side. One, slow. Two, lifting, not throwing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, long leg, nine, 10. Coming in and down, 
We're going to come onto our knees. If you can't be in this deep flexion position, find some other version, anything that you can do. And we're just going to come up and then down. Up and then down. You can use your arms to help support that or not. You can also take it back on the diagonal. I'm going to go back and forth. Good, and then we're gonna curl our toes under. You're gonna see if you can push it back into a squat. And then take it back forward and come up. He sit bones to heels, push it back into a squat as far as you can go. If you can get your heels down, great. If not, don't worry. If your knees are bothering you and this isn't working for you at all, keep it more bent and just go from this position. Even if you don't touch down with the knees, here's the less flexion in your knees version. If you can do the deep flexion, go for it. And if it's like, oh, I can only go to here, then you made it to the American squat. <laughs> this is the full squat. This is the, oh, I don't squat squat. Squatty potty. So really, actually, the way that our organs are, we were made, like our bodies were made to squat to go poop. That is just the way that they're organized. That's why like the squatty potty is actually a really good thing. Or if you live in a country where you can actually just squat and there's a hole in the ground, that is a great way to go to the bathroom. Or a hole in the toilet, the standing squat toilets. All right, let's take it. That's super healthy for your lower back. Being able to squat, being able to get your butt down towards the floor and your knees and everything. But if we haven't done it all our lives, it might be hard to get to that. Let's take it uh, knees back, circles with your pelvis toward the floor, stick your butt out in the back. And change direction. Good. Let's take our curl our toes under, take it up. You're gonna open your feet wide, bend your knees and just circle around, wrist, wrist, ankle, ankle. Shifting your body, knees can stay bent. We're not in a downward dog, we're just in this quadruped position. Change direction. Good, then walk your feet in. Stand on your feet, let your head hang down, shake it no, nod yes. Let your skull weight dangle. Free up your shoulders. Open your feet a little wider and bend one knee and then the other. Shifting from side to side. If you wanna go more extreme on this, you're gonna shift, take it down, come up. Shift, take it down, come up. That is just an option. You can leave your hands on the floor or you can just stay here, right? Depending on what you're working on. Right now, I'm trying to work on muscle strength in my legs, in my quads. When I was dancing all the time and taking ballet class like a million times a week, I never, I had the strongest legs. It was when I stopped taking ballet regularly that, my, uh, that I had that knee injury. Sit on your butt, rotate from side to side, massage out your hips. You can stay on one and just kind of massage it out, move around, letting the weight of your body and the floor massage out the tissue. Change it to the other side whenever you're ready. Getting some shear. So it's not just rolling over, but getting some push-pull in the tissue. Good. And then coming back up onto your legs. I'm going to end it in like a second. So let's go up to stand. Oh, roll it up. Come all the way up. 
Inhale, open chest, heart, and lungs. Reach up to the heavens, reach up to inspiration. Wiggle your fingers. Just keep the fingers wiggling as they move down. Gentle wiggling that feels good, so it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. Inhale up, reach to the heavens, wiggle your fingers. Open out into the space, wiggle your fingers. Wake up your hand, get that movement in there. Like you have little sea creature hands. Inhale up, exhale. Nature is a great inspiration for different ways of moving. So if you see something, maybe think, oh, maybe I can bring that into my body. Just inviting some free flow into your whole body. Let the joints be soft. Arms fluid. Hips, pelvis, legs, spine. Adaptable, easy to move, flexible. Which doesn't mean we lose all discernment and have no boundaries. It just means that we can start to feel, oh, the current is going this way. The current is going that way. Maybe I want to say no to this and step out or I want to get right into it, right? All right, that is that. TV land humans. Thanks for joining in the past, present or future. And everybody else.